There are a lot of people that want to come to America. And depending on your situation, it's going to take you either a very long time or a very short time. If you happen to be a famous novelist or an Olympic athlete or a famous musician, it's going to take you a very short time to get your permanent residency, in other words, your green card, or to get your citizenship. If you happen to be a lawyer or a doctor, it'll take you not that short a period of time, but it's going to take you slightly longer. If you happen to be other skilled laborers, it'll take you a little bit longer than that. And if you happen to be an unskilled laborer, it's going to take you even longer. Now, there's one class of people that's not often discussed, and that's people who are willing to invest a certain amount in the American economy. Those people are given a, an expedited passage into America. They have a shorter wait time for their green cards, and they have a shorter wait time for their citizenship. Currently, for a person to get that kind of expedited treatment, they have to invest over a million dollars in the American economy. Now, I think the idea is great that a person who's willing to invest in the American economy should have a shorter wait time than the average person. That, to me, makes perfect sense. But what doesn't make sense is why the cutoff is, is so high. I mean, the cutoff doesn't have to be a million dollars. Why not bring that cutoff down? Why not bring it down to, say, $20,000? Why not say that a person who invests $20,000 will get expedited treatment? That means they'll have a shorter wait time for their green card and a shorter wait time for their citizenship. That person is still going to have to go through all the same steps. They're still going to have to take the same test for a permanent residency, the same process for, for uh, getting their citizenship. But instead of having to wait several years in between, they'll have to wait a much shorter period of time. You actually see the same, uh, the same process used in amusement parks, where if you get a more expensive ticket, you essentially get to go through a shorter line. Now, I myself have never actually gotten such a ticket because it's not really that important to me. But, you know, I certainly know people who have. And, and it's, 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 it's essentially saying that for those who really want a faster process, it gives you a way to get it. And just, that's all it's saying. It's not saying you have to get it. If you don't want to do that, it's not like we're saying that we're no, no longer accepting refugees or anything like that. We're just saying that in addition to all the current ways that require no investment in the American economy whatsoever, in addition to that, we're now adding this fast lane, an expedited process that says those who are willing to pay a certain amount, say $20,000, now have the option of going through a faster process. When you see illegal immigrants getting mistreated by their employers, that's a direct result of an inefficient policy. These are people who want to come to America, who are willing to work, who aren't here just for the social services and the welfare, who are here to work, and they're getting mistreated because we have an inefficient system. Now, if we allow people to invest in the American economy and then get basically a shorter wait time for getting their green card and then for getting their citizenship, we're going to see a massive reduction in the kind of abuses that you see when employers are taking advantage of you know, illegal workers. Because now, instead of having to bribe their employers or to, or to bribe some scam artists who claim that they're going to get them expedited, uh, an expedited green card or an expedited citizenship, now they can actually invest and actually get that service that, instead of just getting ripped off. It's important to realize that this money that's it's coming into America, that, that way we can have um, immigration bring money into America. Instead of being a drain on the economy, people can be bringing in money. See, right now, uh, many people are trying to pay for their citizenships, or trying to pay for an expedited process to get their citizenship. They're paying twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 per person for, for this service, and they're getting ripped off. They're just paying scam artists. Why not allow those people, instead of to pay scam artists, why not allow them to really contribute to the economy? Allow them to pay the United States government and all the services that, that we, for all the services that you know, we all enjoy? Or why not allow them to invest in the American economy in other ways, ways that actually benefit the country, not just reward dishonest scam artists? When it comes to social services for illegal immigrants, it, it's a very divisive issue. And I think that what sort of stops people from saying no, is that a person in that, in the, in that situation, this, this illegal immigrant, is, is essentially stuck. I mean, there's nothing you can do. You're here illegally, you know, what are you going to do about it? And I think that if you give people a chance to invest in the American economy, to essentially 
you know, put some money forward to get out of the situation. We allow the ultra rich to buy their ways out of problems all the time. Why not let the middle class do the same thing? If you give these people a way out, then we don't have to ask this question. We can say, look, if you want these services, if you want to be, if you want to take, get all the benefits of being in America, well, then either you can go wait in line like everybody else, or you can uh, invest extra money in it, and then you can have a shorter wait time. When it comes to dealing with immigration policy as it relates to medical policy, we're dealing with essentially technical issues. And I've spoken to a lot of doctors and a lot of hospitals about some of the just massive inefficiencies that current policies are, are causing. You know, one doctor told me that because of the law, because of current policies, you know, he had to see a, a person came into the hospital with an emergency, um, and he had to see that person both both based on his, his oath as a doctor and, and because that's a law that every emergency room has to see people that come in with emergencies. And he uh, did this emergency surgery and to follow up on the surgery he decided that, or, or he, he correctly decided that the next course of action was to do physical therapy. Now current policies would not allow him to have that person, because that person was in, in, in the country illegally, just come back later on for his physical therapy. Instead, what he ended up having to do is keeping that person in the hospital for seven weeks straight at the taxpayer's expense, and this is about $2,000 a night, because the current policies don't allow the readmission of people who are legal immigrants. So we really have to, I mean, there are, there are the sort of social parts of this policy, and there are the economic parts of this policy, and there are the technical parts of the policy, and right now the technical parts of, the, of immigration are not working, especially as it, as it applies to healthcare.